as your income has gone up over the past couple of years, do you have extra cash that you're just not sure exactly what you should do with it? Should it go on debt? Should it go in the bank account? Should it go in investments? What do you do? I've got that and more coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. All right, real life financial planning scenario. A young couple came into our office for, uh, for, for some tax work. They're newer to the area and needed their taxes done. And in our normal sort of review and delivery process, they said, we actually want to talk to a a financial planner, we, we've got some questions about, about what we should do. And so changing some of the details to everything's confidential, of course, but the principles are really important. Here's the scenario, young couple, professional couple, good income, and, uh, but no kids, not yet, uh, and, and manageable debt. And, and good income also means it's been rising recently. So he makes about 80 grand and, and she makes about 120, but then in addition to that, she gets, she gets a bonus and the bonus could range from 20 grand up to 50 grand. So big, big bonus. Well, this is, they're young professionals, young, late twenties, early thirties. And so a lot more income than what would normally have been expected. And, and it's been rising um, because she's, yeah, she's excellent. Well, he's excellent at what he does, but she's sort of an industry expert. They have over the past couple of years, as their income is more than doubled and this bonus has presented itself, they confessed yeah, we, so we've found that we were putting constraints on how much we, uh, we spend. Um, and even though we don't have a ton of bills and don't have kids and all of that, we put some constraints in there. Not sure these are the right constraints or, or not, but, uh, and they said they're trying to spend about 75 grand a year, trying to limit their expenses on that. But then the extra amount, not really sure what to do with it. And so what they've done is they've just had to accumulate into high interest savings. And I, I, I think part of the reason is a lot of this was happening as interest rates were starting to rise at the bank. So they're like, well, we don't really know what to do. Oh, this is paying 4% or 3.5%. And now it's paying 4.5%. Now it's paying 5%. And so what they've got is they would throw this extra money into a high interest savings account. And every time they reached 50 grand, they would take 50 and throw it into a CD to try to lock in that interest rate. Well, here we are, it's been a couple of years and they've got about $200,000 extra in cash. And yeah, this, this review with, with one of our CFPs led to, yeah, I, I don't know, is that the right thing? We've got some big ideas out there in the future about maybe using this money, but is that the right thing? Should we do this? Should we do that? Great, quite, great problem to have, but great questions. So taking a look at all six areas of their financial life, by the way, your financial life has six areas to, to it as well. And when you're making big financial decisions or what to do with cash and so on, you've got to look at all six of those areas and how they intersect, as well as how they intersect with what your aspirations are, what your financial goals are. Well, what do you want to do in life? Do you intend to have kids? Is this the house that you're going to be in forever? What are your big dreams and goals? What are your, um, you know, when do you want to be done working and, and, and those sorts of things. So, so we started working through that and understanding that, and that, that is going to help us guide them on, here's what should be done with these dollars. What's the, what do you want to say yes to uh, in your financial life or just in your life in general, and let's get the dollars, every dollar with a purpose, helping you achieve that. So along with that, or part of that, one really key thing was missing, and that is a tax shelter strategy. You, you might say, well, that sounds really geeky and you'd be, complete, you'd be completely right. I just haven't found a better way of saying it. But as you're trying to achieve these long-term goals, um, what's your tax shelter strategy? And there are three things that were sort of standing out with this couple's situation. First, they were not funding Roth IRAs. And you might say, how is this possible? You've got extra income, it's just sitting there in the bank and you're not funding Roth IRAs? Well, that might be self-evident to you. It wasn't to them. In their mind, I guess, they were just, okay, well, we fund our retirement through our income and, and you know, you can't, you can't contribute to a Roth IRA right out of your paycheck. And that's, that's, that was what they were thinking. But the other thing is their income's too much. They can no longer, as their income has grown, they can no longer fund Roth IRAs directly. So they've been missing this opportunity over the past couple of years. And because I said they're young professionals, oh my goodness, those dollars in the, in the Roth, 
Uh, it doesn't give you a tax benefit today, but will grow compound tax sheltered. And then out there in the future, after age 59 and a half, you could withdraw those dollars tax free. Oh my goodness. So missed some opportunity, but the only retirement accounts they have are 401ks. So therefore, even, that, and even though now together their income, if that bonus comes through and whatever, is above those limits for, uh, for funding a Roth directly, they could do what's called a backdoor Roth IRA. In two steps, funding their IRA, but not deducting it because they make too much for that as well. And then second step, converting those dollars from the IRA to the Roth. Normally a Roth conversion is a taxable event. Well, because the only money in their IRAs would be this after-tax money that's that, that they never got to deduct, this transfer or conversion to the Roth is not taxable to them. So that's the backdoor Roth. So that's one part of a tax shelter strategy that makes a lot of sense in this situation. The second, speaking of the 401k, they're not maxing out their 401k. They're not. And again, you might say, oh, why are you not? Well, again, they, this income has grown a lot, but over the past couple of years, the habit that they started with was we're going to save 10% of the 401k. Ever heard that before? Of course, it, right? Everyone, that's, yes, save 10%. We say save 15%. But if your income all of a sudden starts growing, and, uh, and if you do the math on that 10% of, of even 150, that's 15 grand. You're not maxing it out. 10% uh, of, what did I say? He's making 75 or 80. It's, you're not maxing it out. But they've got this extra income or extra money that's, that they don't need to spend and instead of increasing their 401k, they thought, well, we don't really want to make a mistake. We don't know what to do. And if it goes in the 401k, we can't get it back out. And so, eh. But I, I see that as an opportunity. We see that as an opportunity. It, it's got to line up with what are they trying to achieve? What are their goals? Does it make sense for these dollars to be sent downstream for the future? But if so, funding or maxing out their 401ks gets them there faster. Yep. Saves tax dollars today if they're doing pre-tax. Yep. Saves tax dollars in the future by it growing tax-free. One other sort of pro tip with this, this bonus that she's getting, she's not contributing to the 401k on the bonus. And, and that's not, that was not an intentional decision. You might have this as well. We have it here with our 401k that when you enroll and select how much you want to contribute, you select, okay, your normal income, but then there's a separate section where you say, okay, on any bonus, here's how much I want to contribute. And if you didn't even realize that was there, if you just thought, well, I, I'm saving 10%, so 10% of my income. If there's a separate section saying, well, when you get a bonus or if you get a bonus, do you want 401k contribution taken out of that? You actually have to fill that out for it to, for it to apply. And so this past year, her, her bonus was 50 grand. There was no 401k savings on that. So maxing out the 401k, big opportunity, and, and, and funding the 401k on bonus was uh, an opportunity as well that we need to help them capture. And then final, the third clear sort of uh, issue that was revealed to us as we were kind of analyzing their situation um, between our initial meeting, we do a case class, several advisors and, and different financial professionals analyze their goals and situations, what they, what they hope to achieve, but then all the details of their financial life to craft, okay, here's how we think we can help you. Here's, here's, what, here's the relationship we think you need. Here's the service level. Here are sort of the big issues that seem they need to be addressed and, and and so, uh, and then we sit down and, and kind of share that with them. So in between, that's where, that's where this was revealed. They have a HSA eligible high deductible health plan. They're not max funding that HSA. They're not contributing the maximum amount. Now they're doing a decent amount. They're contributing about three grand, but as a, a on a family plan, they could be contributing over eight grand and they're not, they're doing less than, less than half that. And I'm sure the thought process has been or was or is, well, how much do we think we're going to spend on medical expenses this year? Yeah, you know, no kids, you know, we're, we're past the point where we go to the doctor when we have the sniffles. So I don't know, dental cleaning, some going to the eye doctor, I don't know, a couple grand. And that's how much they put into the HSA versus thinking, well, how much will we spend in health care this year? How much will we spend out there in the future? And even if we don't spend it right now or in the future. Could this money be used for future uh, medical expenses even out there in retirement? Could we shoebox this thing? And thinking strategically about using the HSA for their, uh, for their financial future versus just near-term, short-term. So great scenario, great scenario, just looking for some direction. And, and probably one of the best parts about this is 
is in that initial meeting with their CFP, they said, we want you to tell us what, what to do. We, we're, we're aware, we're sort of stuck and, and are sort of not sure what to do, don't wanna make a mistake. And so we want you to be clear and we want you to be direct with us because we wanna make progress in our financial life. Versus sometimes people come in and say, this is what I'm doing, uh, just tell me it's the right thing. And uh, sometimes it is, and sometimes it's not. And these folks came in and said, we're aware that we're probably not doing everything that we should be doing, and we know that we're actually stuck and unsure what to do, can you help us? In that situation, maybe a little bit unique, needing a clear tax shelter strategy, so what's yours? What's yours? And is that aligned with all six areas of your financial life and the financial goals that you're wanting to pursue? Work with your CFP on that. If you don't have a CFP on your team, Contact one on my team. Find us online, corhorn.com. That's corhorn with K, wisemoneyshow.com. You can find us there as well. Or send us an email, info at corhorn.com. All right, there you have it. Go on and take your next wise step in your financial life.